Hello everyone, so today we're going to be tearing down three 10 gallon tanks and combining all of them into one 37 gallon tank. So stay tuned. Alright, so here are the three tanks in question. The three tanks I will be removing. Starting from the left, we have Super Red Fry, Honduran Red Point Fry. In the middle, we have Heterandria Formosa and Black Tiger Baddest. And in the right, we have Longfin White Cloud Minnows. I'll be taking all three of these out of here and replacing it with a 37 gallon acrylic tank. Moving the Honduran Red Points over to a 20 gallon. And then moving also all my Super Reds into that 37 gallon tank. So I'm going to get the pump connected and start emptying these tanks. All right, just checking in with everyone. I want to show you this awesome piece of driftwood. Zoom out a bit. With a needle leaf java fern just covering all of it. Looks like Sideshow Bob. But yeah, pretty neat piece here. Let's see, we got some super red fry in here. Obviously, right? I just said that. And I'll crowd it down here in the corner. And my Honduran Red Point Fry that I'll be moving over to the 20 gallon tank. Still draining this one. All right, as you can see, got everything moved out. Lots of algae on this glass, of course. And I'm gonna go grab the acrylic tank and see if it'll fit in here. Pretty sure it will. So here's the tank in question, nothing fancy. I just have it out here because I will be painting the back black. Hopefully I have enough Plasti Dip. If you're curious on how to do this and some tips and tricks, I do have a video that I posted not too long ago, so go check that out. But I'm going to get back to work. And just like that, we are done. I'll give this about an hour or so to dry and then bring it into the house and we'll take a look at it. All right, so while I'm waiting for the other one to dry, I figured I'd grab another one and just set it in here to see how it would fit and how it would look. And I like it. I think it's going to look good. So I'm not going to be using the shop light that's currently mounted under there. I'll keep it mounted there, but I'll just unplug it and use just a 36 inch light on here just to save on power because I don't need that four foot light for this little tank. So I'm going to go check on that other tank and see if it's dry. I'm pretty sure it's not, but there's nothing quite like watching paint dry. All right, so try not to worry about the mess I've got going on here, but there she is. She's certainly not going to win any beauty pageants, but for 25 bucks, can't complain. I got the pair for $50, so yeah, no complaining. I will keep the crushed coral substrate. Should help with the, the Heterandria Formosa live bears. The back turned out pretty nice, if you can get past all the nonsense on the front of the glass. And yeah, I could spend, you know, all day buffing and polishing, but in the end, it's a $25 tank. And it's just going to get tore down in a couple months anyway, so why bother? I'm going to get this thing filled with water and check back in with you a little later. Alright, so it's starting to look like a real tank. I put that big piece of wood with all the needle leaf java fern in the back left. This piece of wood just hanging out over here. I got my sponge filters in there. Got a little more cleanup to do, but other than that, I think we're getting pretty close. So sit back and uh, wait for the next update, which will be in one second all right checking back in with everyone here got my java moss moved over and kind of a interesting story i don't know if it's bad or good but when i pulled this clump out i found another long fin green dragon pleco a female i have no idea where it came from i don't remember having four i remember buying a trio but i took three out yesterday and I took another one out today. So yeah, and it's an adult, they're all adults. So it's not like it spawned in there and grew up because I haven't had them that long for them to do that. So somewhere along the line, I picked up an extra green dragon. I have no idea from where. But as you can see, I got my super reds put in here, the fry. I'll probably get the adults moved over tomorrow. Not who am I kidding, probably next weekend. And I decided I'm not gonna sell any more fry because if I wanna build up this colony, I gotta stop selling fry. So I'm gonna let what I have now grow out and then I should have a pretty big size breeding colony of about uh, 10, I think. 
But yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that I have so many fish that I can't even keep track of them. I seriously have no idea where that fourth long fin green dragon came from. But I'm not complaining, I promise. <laughs> I'm not going to complain about essentially a free long fin green dragon. But now as we look through my mess and what I'm dealing with now, here are all the long fin white cloud minnow and fry that I got to get out of here. And this is where that big clump of java moss came from that had the extra long fin green dragon. And I'm trying to do this without getting any duckweed, but that's practically impossible. So I'm going to start working on these and I will check back in in a little bit. Okay, so here we are the next day. See everyone is doing swimmingly. Bushy nose plecos are out, the long fin white cloud minnows, you can see the fry. Uh, what else do we got hiding around in here? Hmm. Hmm, I don't see the Heterandria formosa. There's a black tiger baddis, female, scooting around over there. Some more white cloud minnow fry. I'm sure they will take over this tank, but I'm okay with that. So for anyone who saw the last video about my freshwater pom-pom crabs, I'm filming this at the same time. Um, I'm setting this tank up and doing their tank and kind of all at the same time. So somewhat of a continuation for Monday, I will be putting the seven mystery species in this tank just to see how they do. Everything online, the few resources that I found said that they are perfectly peaceful. So we shall find out. All right, here they are. The remaining looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mystery pom-pom crabs. Although to me, let's see if I can get it to focus. Now to me, they look identical, but I'm certainly not an expert on these. So there might be small variations. So I'm just gonna keep them separate just because. I'm gonna get these guys moved over, so hang tight and I'll be right back. All right, they're in the tank, so far so good. Remember, I told you that they do love to burrow, and here he is. It's actually a pretty decent shot right here. Maybe someone can identify him. Just looking at the back of him here. Pretty neat though. Obviously it would be pretty difficult to have these with rooted plants, like stem plants. I would imagine they would dig them up quite a bit. There's a Heterandria formosa. I knew they were in there. There's another Scarlet Battis in the back. There. A couple of the formosa, so that's good. They're still in here doing fine. Let's see if we can find another crab or two. Oh, there he goes, scooting along the bottom. Scarlet Baddis checking him out. I don't know why I keep saying Scarlet Baddis, but they're the Black Tiger Baddis. Giving him the once over. Just scooting along, and that's what these crabs do. I've been watching them now for about a week, and they are just super active, great scavengers. If we can find another one somewhere. Hmm. Not seeing anything. Super red coming out there. Oh, a whole gang of them right there. Can't wait for these to grow out and really start pumping them out. So yeah, that pretty much uh, puts this tank at a close. It's gonna be a lot easier maintaining one large tank versus three 10 gallons. So that'll help the maintenance time a little bit. So you got a few more on the back here. Oh, I guess that's just the top of the heater, but there was one scooting around back there. So that's going to bring it to an end on this tank. I'm pretty happy to go from three 10 gallons to one 37 gallon. 
minus a couple gallons for it not being filled up all the way. I did fill it up all the way and the bubbles splashed too much. There's too many holes drilled out in the back, on the top of the back there. So just keep it about an inch and a half below the water line and I'm okay with that. For some reason it doesn't bother me on acrylic tanks because it doesn't have the border around it. Whereas on glass tanks if the water level is below the trim, that really bugs me. So this has quickly become one of my favorite tanks to just sit and watch because there's so much going on. Although since I was just in there messing around, they're kind of skittish. Here we are, here comes a buddy hanging out. Yoink, right over the top. Oh, no. That's gonna plop down right on top of you. <laughs> See, they really don't care about anything else in the tank, which is nice, not even other crabs. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you had some fun. Remember, we got the live stream tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific. That's happening every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. So I hope to see you all tomorrow.